Hello YouTube, welcome back to KLA Sports. I'm your host Kyle Alexander and it's here. Today is draft day. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of weird because this is the first time it's virtual and um, it's just a lot. It's, I'm kind of interested to see how this turns out, you know, with um, people doing it online and then also they're doing, I believe EA worked on a, on a draft thing where they um, made a virtual, they made a virtual thing where they had the players go up and still like shake hands with the commissioner or do whatever. So I just figured I just uploaded my mock draft uh, overnight. So I just figured uh, why not do one last draft thing. And that is my big board. Now it's changed a lot, but last night was a, I made some final changes. And it's not really a big board. It's like one like players one to one hundred. Uh, like my big my big board is uh, top five players in each position. So, including the, my, who I believe are the top five best players in the draft. But, yeah, I'm not really, like, a, a 1 through 100. I I just like to do top five and stuff. So, yeah, it's going to be it for the introduction. Let's roll right into the video. All right, so first up uh, we have is the top five players in this draft. And uh, as you can see at number one, guys, it, it goes Isaiah Simmons, Chase Young, Joe Burrow, C.D. Lamb, and Jeffrey Okuda. Now, Isaiah Simmons, he's the best player in the draft. He's just, the versatility is there. He can play all three levels on the defense. Now, the only negative thing you can really think about him is, like, um, can you properly can you proper, properly utilize him or, like, what's his true position? But even that, that's something that can be a positive or a negative. So, he's just, he's the best player, best athlete in this class. Uh, Chase Chong, he's a, he's a freak of nature, best pass rushing prospect I've seen in years. Or I've seen in recent memory, and you know he's just great at getting to the quarterback, and uh, especially with that uh, second effort. And, you know Joe Burrow has the pinpoint accuracy. My only knock on him is the one-year wonder thing, but uh, you know uh, I don't think the Bengals are too worried about that. They got C.D. Lamb, who's the best receiver, like great run after catch, and can go up and grab the ball. And Jeff Fuku is just a lockdown corner, best best corner in this class. So yeah, we're, and we're gonna try and keep this video condensed. Not uh, we're not gonna focus on every player. We're just gonna go over it. All right. So next up, we got the quarterbacks. We got Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, Tua Tung Tagovailoa, Jordan Love, and Jalen Hurts. Uh, you know, Burrow is the consensus number one. Now Herbert and Tua. I've I had Tua over Herbert for a while now, up until last night, and that's just because my only thing for Tua is the is the hip injury. Now. I still think he's going to be a great player. It's just his mobility, because you know he's not really a dual threat guy, but he's been a, he's a guy who can extend time in the pocket. Now the only thing is his mobility and whatever team goes on. Especially if I know I had Herbert going there, but um, uh, you know maybe Miami gets him. Like I said Miami's getting two or Herbert, so my if Miami gets two, they're gonna to have to build up that O line. But um, yeah, it's just it's just been injury and Herbert. He's a he's somewhat of a dual threat. Yeah, yeah. I just think Herbert has more. Um, or you're more. He's the more sure about product uh, prospect than Tua. Uh, yeah. And then Jalen Hurts is number five because he's an a leader. He's the oldest out of all these guys, so he has that uh, mat that level of maturity. And um, yeah, I thought whatever team he goes to, he can definitely become a leader for the future. All right, moving on to the running backs. You got Jonathan Taylor, DeAndre Swift, J.K. Dobbins, Clyde edwards hilari and Cam Akers. Uh, I know a lot of people have Swift, number one. I've seen some where they had Taylor as the number four, and I just laughed at that, if I'm being honest. Cause to me, Taylor is the best running back in this class. He's the most complete. He got he has the speed. He has the power. He has the, uh, he has the catching ability. He's been and he he's in the uh, running back factory. Wisconsin they put out or um not running oh yeah no Wisconsin starting to put out good running backs. They just produced Melvin Gordon. Now they got Jonathan Taylor. And I believe they just got another prospect if I'm not mistaken. But you know, Jonathan Taylor he he's like he's honestly like a little bit like Melvin Gordon. And um he to me he's the best running back last year and he's going to be the best running back in this class. Um. Hilari, uh, Clyde Edwards, he's more like a, he's, I feel like he's underrated, sort of, because nobody, I don't feel like nobody really talks about him, but I mean, he had a great season this year for LSU, I mean, yeah, Joe Burrow, like, kind of outshined him, but 
I mean, the run, what the running back was able to do, even though with, uh, Burrow having that historic season, he still put up a thousand yards rushing and had like fifty catches. So, um, yeah, whatever team gets him, I think they're going to get a steal, especially with Cam Akers too. I think I think Cam Akers is going to be a steal. I liked him since his freshman year at Florida State. He's been a good, nice, elusive running back and speedster. And um, yeah, this running. It's an underrated running back class. Not a lot of teams need running backs, but it's, uh, it's honestly a deep running back class, sort of deep. And Taylor's going to be your number one, so he's either going to go to Miami with one of their picks, maybe Kansas City. I don't know. All right, moving on to the wide receivers. You got C.D. Lamb, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, Justin Jefferson, and Denzel Mims. So the top four are pretty much the locks. You know, Lamb, Judy, they, they've been interchangeable, but Lamb... He's just, uh, I feel he's more, or he's like the purely outside receiver. And Lamb's just, uh, I, oh, well, personally, I like Lamb more, but not only, I just think Lamb's, Lamb's a better receiver now. Judy has the route running, and he can play inside, outside, but Lamb, he's that, um, jump ball. I feel like he's a complete guy. He's, he has the jump ball ability, but he can also, um, you can give him a slant. He'll take like 40, 50 yards to the house. You know, Lamb's just been, yeah, I think Lamb is the best receiver, and he's just his um his athleticism and skill. I think that's definitely going to be a lot to offer, or he's definitely going to bring a lot to a team. It can easily be a wide receiver number one uh from day one. Uh, same with Jerry Judy. Now Judy, you can like I said, you can line him up in the slide outside. And um, now I've met, I've heard some team, or I've heard mock drafts have Judy to the Forty ers and one guy mentioned that it's going to be tricky because Debo got Samuel and Judy who can both play inside outside. So if you line line them up all over the place, teams aren't going to know what you're doing, which I think is true. But uh, yeah, the, so like the top four guys are pretty much the locks. Now five is where uh, it's interchangeable. You could put T Higgins, maybe Brandon Ayuk. I put Denzel Mims just because like his like I say, he has the jump ball ability. Like he's that pure. And he's one of the one guys who can be who's an outside receiver. Uh, he's one of the guys who's like a purely outside receiver. And a team, if a team gets him, are you getting a great deal now? He's not really known as a run after catch guy, but still, he's going to be a great red zone threat. And um, yeah, I think if it, whatever team gets him, I, like I said in my last video, the Eagles, if the Eagles get him, that's going to help them out uh, with their need at outside receiver. All right, next up is the tight ends. I have Bryson Hopkins, Albert uh, Quagunam, Cole Komet, Thaddeus Moss, and Hunter Bryant. Now, I know a lot of people have Komet as their one tight end. I don't see it. Like, from the film the film I saw on him, at least, uh, he's, not, uh, he's not too fast, which I know tight ends aren't really super fast, but uh, that's why I have Bryson Hopkins at one. Like, he, he's a fast. He moves like a receiver, honestly. He's, he reminds me of Evan Ingram. How they're both smaller guys that can move fast and quick, and Hawkins his route running is smooth, and Komet his Cole, Cole Komet his route running isn't uh, isn't that great, and his blocking uh, his blocking isn't that great honestly. Like his blocking is something that needs to be worked on, but I mean yeah he's still a good tight end. Whatever team gets him, I think if New England can get him, that's going to be a great pickup. And Albert O, he's just been, like I said, he was my number one from day one. But he's moved down to number two. He's just, cause he's still, is going to be a red zone target. His route running is, uh, honest, his route running is good. And we saw the combine. He ran like a, I can't remember the exact, it was like a 4-2, like, a, not 4-2, uh, 4, it was like a 4-4, four, 4-5, four, four, which was impressive for a tight end. So, yeah, I mean... He has the skills. Uh, the only thing about now, Thaddeus Moss, he's going to be a great tight end. I just think the uh, lock, knock on him is his athleticism. But I still think get him in the right system, he's a great. He's going to be a great tight end. All right, moving up or moving on to the exterior offensive lineman, we got Andrew Thomas, who's my number one. Uh, then we got Makai Becton, Tristan Wirfs, uh, Jedrick Willis. And Josh Jones. Now Andrew Thomas has been my number one since day one. And I know last couple of days I last couple of weeks I switched back in there, then I switched worse. 
But now I realize Thomas is to me Thomas is still the best lot tackle in this class. I don't know why he's slipping. You know, he's uh he he even mentioned some saying he's the best player, he's the best tackle. He plays in the SEC, so he goes up against a lot of competition. Now, I feel like Penn State has the better. I'm not Penn State. I meant the the. I've been thinking about the division, uh, Big Ten, where Penn State is. Uh, they have the better. They have the best defense, or they have the better defenders. You got Yerder Gross Matos, Chase Young. Um, no, I'm missing some guys, but like, yeah, and but even SC, uh, the SEC has some good guys like Jonathan Bernard. Um, Caleb on chase on so he's able to hold his own against there and he's a great and powerful blocker play right tackle left tackle this is going to uh, be a great this is going to be a great lineman now my, and my big board doesn't line up with my draft because my draft is just based on who I think the team will take uh, depending on their stocks and stuff uh, Makai Becton even though he slipped because of his flag drug test Skill wise, I still think he's the best tackle after Thomas, and he has the size. He's a mauler, and he's got uh, great. He has some. He has quick feet, too, for a big guy, and the athleticism's there. And um, yeah, th those are my tackles. And worth or worth, he's a he's a he knows how to use his hands. He's a great blocker, and um. And so these are my ta these are my offensive tackles top five, and Jones Jones and Austin Jackson are interchangeable. I just think Jones is better. But um, yeah, all right. So staying on the offensive line, we're moving to the interior. We got Lloyd Cushenberry, Cesar Ruiz, Matt Hennessy, Nick Harris, and the team um Muti Muay Thai. No, not Muay Thai. Uh, Muti. Now, Cushenberry, best interior lineman in his class. And a team's going to get a steal because he's going to he's a late he's gonna be a late first-round pick. So, Seattle could get him, and that could be a steal. But, um, yeah, he has great size, and he knows how to use his hands. Uh, he's been a great blocker, too, for uh, LSU. Big part of that offense. Uh, Cesar Ruiz, he's a nice center for Michigan. I think Ruiz can uh, play guard, too. Now, um, I feel like most I feel like most of these guys could um switch around. I feel like Kushmary could definitely be, could be a guard, and uh, Natane he's a he's a what's he a guard? Yeah, he's a good guard. The only my only knock on him is his footwork is can be kind of sloppy or not sloppy, but his, yeah, his footwork uh isn't that clean or it can improve, he could improve on that. But I mean other than that. The interior line, these are pretty much the top guys, the top premium guys. Because after this, it's pretty much a drop-off. Where at tackle, you still have some premium guys after that. All right, so that is it for the offensive side. Moving on to the defensive side, we're going to D-tackle. You got Derek Brown, Javon Kinlaw, Neville Gallimore, Justin Matabuke, and Ross Blacklock. Now, Derek Brown, he's a great D-tackle. Uh, he's a size, he's a great power rusher. He can get pressure on the QB. But he's more of a run stopper. And Javon Kinlaw. Now, Javon Kinlaw is the best pass rushing D tackle. And I like Ken, You guys know I'm a fan of Kinlaw. His versi I say this every time. His versatility plays all uh, every edge rush position. So whatever team gets him, they can do so much with him. And Derek Brown. Now, Derek Brown, I still think he's just the best because... Uh, because of not oh uh, yeah because of his size and how he's able to stop the run and he can still he's a better run stopper and he can still get uh pl get pressure on the QB um and beat it block and shed his blocks Neville Gallimore I really I'm gonna be honest I really haven't seen film on him uh, I just feel like I think he's a good D, or from what I've heard it's a good D tackle he can play uh what three four defensive end. So, yeah, I just kind of went with the consensus there. But for, uh, originally I had Black, Ross Blacklock and Raekwon, uh, what, Raekwon Lewis? No. Um, Raekwon Davis. But, um, uh, Matabuke, he's impressed me. I saw his film, and, um, you know, he's, he's great footwork. He's pretty quick, and he knows how to, he can shed his blocks, and he's a good run stuffer, or he's good at stopping a run. And he can still get, he still gets pressure on the QB. I think he's better at getting pressure, 
he's better at getting to the quarterback than Derek Brown, in my opinion. But uh, Matt Abuke, he's just a yeah, he's a great interior player. And Blacklock, I was impressed with, or I wasn't really too impressed with his film. Like he's a good run stopper, but I see him more as a second or third round player. All right, so moving on to edge rusher, we got the consensus in Chase Young. You got Caleb on Chase on, AJ Epineza, Zach Bond, and Yurta Gross Matos. Now, I had Epineza at two, but Chase on has just risen, and he can play outside linebacker or DN. So that's going to be great for a team. And he's just really improved his stock in his play this year, took his game to the next level. Epineza, I think he's only sliding because of his combine, which I don't really pay attention to combine. I mean, I'll mention, like, some of the stuff, like I did with uh, Albert Aquaglinam in his 40. Now, but I don't really pay the combine too much attention because a lot of the star players have had bad combines and a lot of bad players have had good combines. Combine really doesn't mean anything. So I don't know if that's why he's slipping. I wouldn't. That's not why I would pass on him. Still a great pass rusher. And Zach Bond, I originally had him as a linebacker. But I'll put him here at edge because that's where everybody else has him. Because Zach Bond, he's Kyle Van, he's the next Kyle Van Noy. Or like his play style is Kyle Van Noy. He can play outside linebacker, edge rusher, and the three like three four outside linebacker. He can also play a little bit inside linebacker and drop back in coverage. So that's why I think New England could be looking to get him at um, where they pick like twenty two, twenty three. Um, yeah. All right, next up, top five linebackers. Again, consensus, consensus and Isaiah Simmons, best player in the draft. And you got Kenneth Murray, Patrick Queen, Troy Dye, and Jordan Brooks. To me, Murray's better. Now, I know a lot of people say Queen's better in coverage, but I think, honestly believe Murray's, um, I feel like Murray is better in, co uh, just slightly better in coverage. And Queen, like the film I've seen on him, he's, he looks more like a, run stopper or, or like he goes up and um like a tackler like a player that goes up to the line and like stops the run or he gets tackles which is going to be good for a team but i per i personally think kenneth murray's better um and troy die this is weird now because troy die is project like a day three guy which is weird because to me he's still one of the best linebackers in this class i still have him at four i have him over jordan brooks who's project who's seen some first round hype and Troy Dye, he's uh, good in coverage. Uh, he's a good tackler. I feel like his coverage skill is his best asset. And, you know, once he... I feel like once if a team gets him... Whatever team gets him is going to get a steal. Uh, Jordan Brooks, he's a uh, he's a good guy. He's great at tackling. And um, his block shutting is pretty good, too. Um, yeah, those are my top five linebackers. All right, and then on the corners, we have, again, Consensus and Jeff Okuda. Then we got C.J. Henderson, Christian Fulton, Trayvon Diggs, and A.J. Terrell. Okuda, lockdown corner, best corner in the draft. Best corner in the draft, best DB in the draft, no doubt. C.J. Henderson. Now, the thing about him is that his play kind of went down this year because he wasn't, they didn't want to risk injury with him being a first-round pick, which I understand. But also, like, uh, the year before, Henderson's a, a lockdown. Or he's a, a great man corner, and knows how, he knows how to make plays on the ball and get his hands in there. And then I got AJ Terrell at five. Um, he, like I said, he's a good man corner. He's a great outside corner. He's a top five. He's a top five corner. The only thing uh, knock on him was the LSU game. Again, you don't judge somebody off of one game. So whoever gets AJ Terrell, they can get a day one starter. Uh, but yeah, this corner class is, uh, and this corner class is honestly, pre uh, more of like and slot guys who can play outside. So uh, Trayvon Diggs would be a, he's going to be a premier guy based on his ability to be, a, based on him being a outside corner. All right, and last but not least, we have the safeties. We got Grant Delpit, Xavier McKinney, Antoine Winfield Jr., Kyle Duger, and Jeremy Chen. To me, Dope is still the best safety in this class. Um, I know his tackling is kind of a bottom down, but still, he's a great center fielder, great in coverage, can get, uh, what's the name? Yeah, like great in coverage, can play the box, can play outside. He's he's your zone guy. McKinney, he's more of a, uh, he can play all over the place, but he's more of a box safety. Like, he usually plays low. Like, I've seen plays where he played corner, 
and lined up on guys. And yeah, McKinney, he's still a great, great safety. And I could see Dallas taking him in the first round. Antoine Winfield is a good safety. He's a nice, great hitter. And, um, you know, he can, he knows how to get it. He knows how to, uh, get around to the ball, like make plays on it in the air. Uh, Duger, he dominated in D2. That's the only knock on him is if he's D2, can he hold his own against actual competition? I think Duger, yeah, he's a, I think he can. He's going to be a, uh, that I feel like he could be like a sub linebacker, strong safety type of guy. And same with Jeremy Chen. Chen is a big hitter, but he's also a ball hawk. Like he knows how to track the ball, make plays. And um he is also a good special he's also a pretty good special teamer. Um yeah, so those are two small school guys at the bottom at the bottom of my top five who I think could they can definitely be stars in the league. Alright, so that is it for my big boards. Um, let me know in the comment section what you think below. Let me know in the comment section what you think, uh, what you would change about it, who else would you have in there. And also, I know I usually do my draft sleepers, but I'm going to do that after the draft. So I'm going to look at who teams got and look at some sleepers. And I'm going to also be, I'm going to also upload a live reaction of my Eagles, of my two favorite teams, Eagles and Ravens, first round picks. Now, I'm not, it's not going to be a live stream. It's just going to be me, me recording the live thing and then uploading it but uh, yeah so that's it for this episode um let me know in the comment section below who you want your team to draft and why and that's it for uh, that's it don't forget to like comment subscribe i'll talk to you guys next time